Hello everyone, welcome. Tracy Evans here. Um, I'm just popping by because I've had a couple of requests for videos uh, and I've had a request for a video um, with a certain stamp set. So I thought I'd pop along and actually create a video using one of my stamp sets as per a request. Nothing complicated, uh, a reasonably simple card, but sometimes simple is best. So I've got a piece of white smooth card and the card is five inches in width by seven inches in length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, sometimes when you look on camera, when you're sitting down, you can't actually see where you're placing your, non, your, your low tack tape. I nearly said non-stick tape then. So I'm just placing down low tack tape, just down the sides of my card, just so that I'm masking off the edges, which means that the central area is open for me to decorate, which is perfect. Just, so I'm just adding it around the edges with low tack tape. So you can use any low tack tape. I tend to use low tack tape rather than masking tape just because it does literally do what it's supposed to do. It removes very easily. So just, I'm now shuffling on my chair, which is what I normally do to get comfortable, which is typical. Right, let's move some things out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little touch of colour to the background. So I've got my brain and I want a couple of colours that are not too dark. So I'm just looking for some green colours. So oops. I'm now dropping my glue, which is really professional. So what I'm going to go for is I'm going to go for aqua duck egg and I'm going to go for spring which is just what I'm looking forward to now is spring really looking forward to it just so that I can get out in the garden it just lifts the spirits so what I'm going to use I'm going to use spring fresco finish paints by paper rc and aqua duck egg I've got my brayer and what I'm going to do I've had a request to use this stamp set, which is my stamp set Poppies, Papaver Poppies, and it's hash 395. And I love this stamp set because there's so many individual elements, but they're also elements that you can use all together. So I really love that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with small amounts of paint. And I'm just going to stand up a little bit just so that I can make sure that what you see in camera is exactly what I'm working on. What I don't want to do is I don't want to add too much paint. I want to work with small amounts of paint. So as you can see, there's just a little blob of each. And it's very easy not to work when you've got, I've got paint on my finger, when you've got the phone in the way. And I'm just brayering the paint out so that it goes all across my brayer. But if I do that, the colours also blend on the brayer, which means that you, you, you're less prone to get harsh lines. The other thing is, I'm going to use a very light touch. And if you lift your brayer as you're doing it, so as you can see, I roll along and each time I come back, I lift the brayer off the surface of the card. And even when the paint's getting quite dry on the brayer, I still brayer that over the card. So I'm just taking my time just to do that. Don't be in too much of a rush. And I'm still using the paint that's on my non-stick craft sheet. And if you want, you can go back. So if you decide, oh, I've got a little bit too much green and I want a little bit more of the duck egg blue, which, so, sorry, a little bit more of the aqua duck egg, that which is exactly what I want. And again, I bray the paint out before I go to my card. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more of the blue. 
and because these paints are chalky it gives me exactly the look I want so we're just going to wipe that mess up so it, it gives me a really sort of you can either make it look shabby chic or it gives you a pale background that you can work with so the background's not too overpowering for anything else that you're doing so just wipe that up so I've got a beautiful background there and what I'm going to do is grab my acrylic block so I've got a border acrylic block here and what I'm going to do first is just take a look at my stamps let's have a look at the stamps and as you can see there's lots of elements on here there's little grasses little dotted stamp all little foliage kind of stamps and I'm going to use those initially so I'm going to pick up the grass image let me just make sure you can see that. Yes, I've put over the white card area. I'm just going to use this image here. And initially, I'm not going to stamp with a black because I don't, I don't want to start with the black first because then there's nowhere for me to go. If everything's too dark before I start, then I've got nowhere to go because I can't erase that black or I can't cover that black up. So what I'm using is I'm using Versafine Claire Verdant. And I'm just going to add some of the grass just to the background. And I can just do the second generation stamping as well. You can even do third generation stamping just because it'll add the shadows that you want which is perfect. So the thing I'd say with this is just take your time. You can actually do this on your gel press. And if you press this on your gel press, you'll then get a ghost print. Um, but I'm doing it just a different way this time. So make sure that you add it in different heights. Don't stamp everything all at the same height because you don't get definition, you don't get depth, so that it draws the eye through the project. If you stamp everything at the same depth, so you don't want that. So I'm just going to add one more again at a slightly different angle, just so that you can see. Sometimes it's better to stand up because you can actually see what you're stamping clearly. You can see what you're aiming for. So do I want that grass again? Just umming and ahhing now. Yes, what we'll do is we'll take that grass again. So the same image that we've used before. And this time we'll use warm breeze. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a scrap of paper. Let's just move these. I've always got so many things in the way. I've got a scrap of paper because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test this colour on the scrap paper. Just test what the colour's like and just test. If you fold the piece of paper, you can just test then whether that's going to go with your project. And just test your second generation. And for me, the second generation print is better. I don't want the dark blue at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink it with the warm breeze. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the stamp onto scrap paper and then I'm going to stamp it onto my project. Second, third generation, fourth generation. So I've just stamped it just so that it isn't too dark at the moment. And you don't want too much of that. So I may have just one more. So again, stamp with the warm breeze. Stamp the first generation onto your card. And we'll just add one a little bit taller to our card, like so. That's it. Because we can add the darkness later when we've decided where we're going with everything just so that we don't 
we don't ruin anything initially when we first start. So this is the grass image that we've used. Now there's a couple of what I call fillers on here, fab little filler stamps that can create your little grassy areas. So they are perfect. So we've got this little grassy one here. So let's take this one. And what we're going to do is we'll add a slightly darker green. So we've got Shady Lane. So just ink that grass up. And this time we've got a few bits of darker colours. And what you can do is you can take it quite low if you want and just add a bit of the grass at the bottom. You can add the second generation and then you can add the third generation. So just take your time just to add this. And then go, you see, you can also, whoops, you can also add a pop of a darker colour. So this, this colour here is Purple Delight. Let's just take a look at what it looks like, because this might give it some depth. Let's just take a look on the scrap paper. Yes, this will give it some depth. So let's start to give it a little bit more depth. So we're using the Purple Delight and we're going to give the imagery a little bit more depth. You can do it at different angles and you don't have to press too hard. You can just take your time and I think we want another one of those again with the purple. Don't forget the edges. You don't want to forget the edges. There we go. So what I can do now is grab another stamp. You see these little fillers are brilliant. And what we've got now is you can decide on this one or this one. Not that that looks very good, but if you put it over the card, you can see. So this one here, let's grab this little dotty one. I love that little like purpley magenta colour. I just think it's lovely, really lovely. So what I'm going to do now, we, we will add some height to this as well. No problem at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the verdant and just add the verdant just with this little grass. So just adding some of this little grass with the verdant. Then I'm going to go to the shady lane just to give it some more. So I'm adding the shady lane with this little dotty grass. See, and these are great fillers. This is what the kind of thing you want it for because it fills the space rather nicely. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, we want some of that blue. I knew I'd used another colour, the warm breeze. So just use the warm breeze and add some of those dots. just a little bit higher up just because it's all in your again you can add the second generation and the third generation just because it adds to that grassy feel now what I'm going to do just to see what the effect I'm trying to aim for is I'm now going to put my poppy stamps just decide which one I want to use See, and I quite like this one. Let's pull it off the acetate just so that we can see. So I quite like that poppy there because it's not too bold and it's just a nice image. So let's add this poppy. And now with the poppy, I'm going to add this in some black stamping. Now, if you want, you can tilt your poppy. It doesn't have to be straight every single time. You can tilt it slightly, just so that it looks like it's blowing in the wind. And it's up to you where you put that poppy. You can always extend your stems should you need to. 
so just take your time to add your stamped image it doesn't matter about it being slightly pale there because we're going to add some dimension to the flower so it's not a problem at all so just going to take this because we're going to cut the flower heads out because we're going to add a little bit of colour to them so don't worry about that too much it, that's just because we've stamped onto a painted surface and that painted surface is a little bit sticky so you just have to make sure that you let the ink pad rest now what I'm going to do I'm going to leave it to you see what I'm thinking is when I pull when I pull this masking tape off I'm then going to have one poppy in a pot but we'll see how it goes we'll see how that goes so what we're going to do now is just stamp our poppy heads just onto let's just get rid of that piece of card move this scrap paper and we're just going to stamp the poppy heads just onto a separate piece of card one and then we can cut these out just to make them pop a little bit more like so and then what we can do is we can make these pop by adding a little bit of color to the stamped image and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my polychromos and I'm going to color my flowers in blue because I feel like a blue poppy. Now, when you're colouring with polychromos, you have to remember that you do have to lay down a very light layer of colour. Now, I'm not a professional colourist. Colorist. There are lots of ladies and gentlemen out there that colour so beautifully and so professionally. So there's lots of videos you can watch for that. What I do is I go for simple techniques that work for me and give me a result that I'm happy with. That's it really. What I always do is make sure that I work with sharp pencils. So I'll always give my pencil another sharp, just a sharpen, just to make sure they're nice and sharp. There's something about having your pencils sharp. It brings, it, sorry, it allows you to lay the pigment down so much easier because you've got a sharp pencil. And if you notice, I always add my colour. I'm sort of adding this by tilting my pencil on the side, mainly because for me, it just allows me, if I tilt that pencil on the side, it allows me to add that pigment very lightly. Sometimes if I hold it up like this, I tend to press on a little bit harder and that's, not what you need really when you when you lay down the pigment with polychromos you need to lay it down very lightly and in layers it's all about adding the layers and adding them lightly with each layer don't add each layer if you go and add too much pigment instantly there's nowhere to go you, you can't add any more because you've already added that layer of pigment too thickly and the paper then becomes shiny and it won't allow you to lay any more pigment down. So you just need to add it very lightly. And I'm going I'm going for the look, you know, it doesn't have to be super professional. You know, you're going for an overall look to the to the card. Sometimes I'll use a flicking motion. Sometimes that's easy for me as well to add down the pigment. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of this colour. And if you can leave a little bit of white, that helps just to lift the colour. It makes everything nice and bright if you leave a little bit of the white. It's not a problem if you don't leave some of the white because what you can do is you can just use a gel pen just to add some white should you need to. So that's not a problem at all. I just add this so I'm just adding layers of that polychromo 
Obviously, this video isn't about colouring. This video is about creating a card with the stamps and the stamps doing all the talking. If you want to colour it and spend a lot more time colouring than I do, then that's perfectly fine. But just take your time when you're colouring. Don't, don't be in a rush like me because you're doing a video. The thing about colouring is that you enjoy the process and you just take your time. So I'm just enjoying that, just layering a little bit more pigment just to give me a little bit more depth. And really I just want them to look like blue poppy heads. So I'm just going to cut those out, which are nice and easy to cut out. I mean, I could have had these cut out before the video, but I tend to create a video in real life. And what I mean with that is uh, I do cut some things out if there's a lot of prep involved. But if it's a nice, simple card and there's not too many processes, then I'll actually do my cutting out during the live video. So I'm just adding that poppy and what you can do is just add a little bit of a snip just to so you can bend the petals. You can even screw them up just so it looks a little, you break the fibres in the paper and it just looks a little bit more realistic. They don't look too flat. So just... this out if you want you can leave a nice white border around your flower this for this particular project I don't want the white border I do sometimes it does depend on the project a lot of the time but we're all different we all like different things so I'm just going to scrunch that up like so just to give it just break the fibres and give it a little bit more life. So that's why it didn't matter too much about your stamping. It looks more lifelike when it's like that. But I think what we can do, just looking at this, I'm just going to grab this little stamp here from the same stamp set, this little stamp here. Do excuse my grubby fingers. I've been doing samples and my hands are in such a mess. And the professional I am, I didn't have a bath or anything beforehand. What I'm going to do, just before we put these on, I'm going to add a little pop of pink. So I'm going to use Charming Pink Versafine Clair. I do love these Versafine Clair inks. I just think they're nice and vibrant. They stay wetter longer and they just, I just love them. And I'm loving this little pop of pink just on the card as well. I just think the pop of pink just lifts it a little bit and I don't think it'll talk to you or you won't understand what I'm saying until I've removed that low tack tape. So just them there. That's it, it just lifts it a little bit. So just add that here, like so. And what I'm going to do, let's just try not to knock the camera. I'm going to stick my flowers down because then I can see where I'm going. And as you can see, I've not covered all this space but we, we need to do a little bit more work just to make it a little bit more interesting. So because I've scrunched those flowers up, it gives it a little bit more life to the flower, just so it doesn't stand too flat. Now, if you don't want to add that dimension on your flower, just make sure that you stamp nice and crisp. Then you don't have to add the layers if you don't wish. So it's entirely up to you. What I'm going to do then she says, hopefully finding my water brush. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, this is where the edge 
of my low tack tape is. So I've got the edge there and I'm just drawing around with an ink tense pencil. Just the edge, she says, hopefully getting the edge. Just the edge. of where the low tack tape, just with the edge where the low tack tape is. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blend that out, just so it gives me a shadow effect, just around the edge. So that's just an ink tense pencil in gray. If you don't have an ink tense pencil in gray, don't worry, just use uh, grey distress oxide, I couldn't get my words out then, use a distress oxide or you could use some watercolour. It's entirely up to you what you use. So just ink tense pencils are reactive to water, hence I can blend the colour out and add a shadow because it's reactive to water. So that's exactly what I'm doing. If you haven't got that, you can take a grey oxide and just blend around the edges. I didn't want to come in too much with too much blending. And also I wanted to go for a different look. I didn't want it to look or do the same techniques over and over. It's nice just to do something a little bit different each time even if you change it up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, am I happy with that? I always have to ask myself before I finish, before I've done anything, if I'm happy. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my white splatters now with my Posca paint pen. Just so the reason I've added that now is that I didn't want the Posca splatters outside where we've added the low tack tape. So I didn't want that. So what I'm going to do just I think I want a little bit of detail. I've just decided I want a little bit of detail. So I know exactly what I'm what I'm going to do. Uh, just grabbing Just grabbing a little stamp set, just grabbing the reverse squares and I'm going to add a little bit of detail just to the edges. I never rush what I'm doing, I always look back and have a think about what I want. Now if you don't want to add this little bit and you just want to leave it as it is, you can just do that. I'm just going to add some little touches just to the edge. So I'm just inking up with Nocturne ink. And I'm just adding a little touch of ink just to the side. And if you notice, I'm not overpowering. I'm being very gentle with the way I add it. But I just think it gives it a pop. It just makes everything pop. And I do like that, just every now and then, adding a little detail that makes everything pop. So just add little tiny squares there. That's enough, I don't want much. And when I remove the low tack tape, you'll then see how that works. So, and I can never remember which one went down first. So just remove the low tack tape. And sometimes when you remove the low tack tape, you've actually got lovely patterns on there that you could use. You could stick that onto a piece of paper, cut those strips out and then use that as well. And this is what I like about this low tack tape is it really is low tack. It doesn't rip your paper. I'm still very aware even though I've used this lots of times, I still don't yank at the card. So 
just there we go we'll just put that in the bin and as you can see that's when it comes to life is when you've got this white border i really think it makes it pop now what you can do let's have a look about how it looks let's just stamp the poppy stamp once more oops like so we want a piece of white card and i've always got plenty of pieces of white card let's just move that out of the way and what we're going to do is stamp the poppy once again just like so i've already got a dirty finger mark on that because i just need to wipe my hands so using the same poppy just give your hands a wipe especially if you've used black ink because sometimes if you're using a white card you don't want any of those those dirty marks on there so i'm just going to color that flower once again just give it a, a little bit more color and again as before i'm just adding light layers of color Now, if you, obviously, if you've got your alcohol markers, you can use your alcohol markers. But if you don't like colouring at all, then what you can do is take a broken china, distress oxide ink or distress ink, whichever you prefer. Just press it onto your non-stick craft sheet, spritz with water and then mop the colour up with this stamped image and then you'll have a coloured flower without even thinking about the colouring. It'll just be naturally coloured. There's always ways around it if colouring's not really your cup of tea. Although I must admit it's very relaxing. Very relaxing. So just add a little bit more of that pigment. I can't believe another week has passed by it's just the weeks are just vanishing I'm just and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this little flower out I always tend to cut it away from the big sheet of card because then it just makes it easier for me to cut out I don't like having a big piece of card to try and handle so I don't need to go close to the stem. I can leave a white border to make cutting out the stem a little bit easier. I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, I'm not cutting out that stem. Well, if you don't want to cut out the stem, then just use a piece of cotton thread or use a piece of twine and make your own stem. Or you can even plait a piece of twine and that can be your stem as well. Just for do it in a different way. If you want to add a little bit of texture to your card, Obviously, this card is more simplified and I'm going for a more simplified look. So that's what I'm aiming for. So we've now got this. Now, I must admit, this pot, which is from... Let's grab the stamp set. The pot is from stamp set 401. And it is the containers. I find this stamp so useful because I'll, if I always want to add another little detail, the little container just looks brilliant. So I do find this one really useful. So what I'm thinking is this will be added off the card, off the edge here. And we're going to add the flower like so, so that we've got three poppies on that card, but off centre of the card. So we're going to add this. Let's get my black pen so we can finish that stem. Let's adhere this. So just bring it in a bit. I'm now talking to my card. Oh, sorry, state of affairs, isn't it really? Do you actually talk to your artwork? Because I do. I talk to my artwork all the time. And if I make it at a different level, let's just make sure my pot's okay. 
push it at a different level than the other poppies just so it does look slightly different so push see this this adhesive is still i can still move everything so that's perfect just what i want and then i can add my pot now i added a little bit of text to the pot figure one and just to the pot that's also on the same stamp set of the as the containers so i added that to my container and then what we're going to do is just draw our stem into the flower just so it looks like it's in the vase so just add that stem just so that you can see that like so and what I'm going to do is again add that little bit of shading just around my pot just to make it pop a little bit more I'll just give it a little bit of shading with the ink tense pencil like so I do love adding the shading and I do love that little bit of meadow stamping now obviously if you wanted to keep the card the way it was without the pot you can do that that's entirely up to you but what I'm trying to show you is how you can take things up a level how you can leave them at certain stages it's entirely up to you so I'm just going around that pot just to add a little bit of shading and you often go quiet when you add the shading because you're just engrossed in what you're doing there we go of course we do need to add some kind of wording or other what have I got on the stamp sets oh yes so we'll take this stamp set again but what we'll do is we'll mat and layer this card so you can see where it's going and what it looks like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to a black mat which makes it pop instantly so let's add that to the black mat And I'm just using a tonic adhesive, the luxury adhesive. I'll just add that to my black card. And before I press it down, I just make sure that I've got it level. Use a piece of scrap paper if you want to press it down or make sure your hands are clean. I'm then going to add that to a five and a half inch by seven and a half inch card blank. Just add that. card front let's make sure it's opening the right way I won't do the inside on this video but if you wanted to do the inside of the card you'd cut a piece of card to fit the inside then brayer a little bit of the color that we used in the background and then just add one poppy just so that the inside looks as good as the outside just press that down a little bit then you can see how it just it's beautiful just beautiful so what i'm going to do now is on this stamp set we've got the word grow which you can see now when i don't have the glare so take this stamp set whoops let's just remove this poppy from this one and have the word grow move that out the way grab a little piece of card a little piece of card you couldn't grab a bigger piece of card if you tried for the word grow again I'm using Versafine Claire Nocturne just for the stamping just to add that to the white card 
try to remember to put the stamps back so that I don't lose them. So we're going to cut out that sentiment. Chuck my card on the floor like I always do. Then what I'm going to do is add the word grow here. See, I like this. It's got a real fresh feel to it. It's lovely. Just reminds me of spring. And not everything has to be over complicated. It can be simple and still look just as effective. Now, you know what I'm going to say? So I'm going to grab my ink tense pencil once again and just go around the edges of the sentiment just so that it will pop. I'm only adding a very light layer. I'm not I'm not pressing the pencil down too thick. Just a light layer. Just smudge that out. And then this could be for a gardening friend. You could add a pack of seeds inside just to say you're thinking about them for spring, especially if they're a gardener. And I have to say, I'm rather pleased with that. I think that looks lovely. It's fresh, it's not too much, but it really draws the eye in. And I think it just shows those poppies in a, in a simple way and all I've done is I've used this stamp set stamp set 395 and I've used stamp set 401 and I think they go together beautifully and I, I have to say these little grasses and these little dotty things I use them on quite a few things not just meadow stamping so I hope you like that card and I hope you enjoyed the video I'd love to hear from you and I hope you're going to have a lovely weekend and I will see you all soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye.